guys, welcome to Collider Movie Talk, movie talk for movie fans. I'm your host, Ashley Mova, and this is The Daily Show, where we give you all the latest news from the world of movies, plus some insight into what it all means. Joining us, as always, is John Campia. Greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to the best damn movie related podcast on the planet Earth, coming to you from right here at the Collider Video Studios here in Burbank, California, and we are so glad you decided to make us part of your day. Also here, Christian Harloff. How's it going? Um, <laughs> Thank you. Forget it. <laughs> Never mind. Also here, Mark Ellis. What was that? I want to rock out. Was, yeah. that, was that possibly that Nickelback? That was some Zeppelin. Oh, nice. <laughs> Better. A little bit of Zeppelin. Yeah. Nickelback? Yeah. That's where you She's go. from Canada. Oh, that's a good point. <laughs> well, this morning, the nominees for the 73rd Annual Golden Globe Awards were announced. The winners will be announced at the ceremony on January 10th, which will once again be hosted by Ricky Gervais. Here are your film nominees. Best Motion Picture Drama. Carol, Mad Max Fury Road, The Revenant, Room, and Spotlight. Yeah, we talked about this a little bit uh, the other day. Very good nominees, no doubt. There's some very solid names up there. Uh, but for me, it's Spotlight. Spotlight, it just, it was such a surprise by, you know, it, it is a smaller film. It feels like a smaller film. It is a smaller film. But I was amazed when I went and watched it how epic it felt, despite the scope and the scale of it. Uh, so a lot of good w ones on there. It's nice to see Mad Max Fury Road getting a nomination, but for me personally, it's Spotlight. You know, I would have said Spotlight because the SAG Awards, it felt like they snubbed the, the actors in particular a little bit, even though they rewarded the ensemble. Here, Spotlight is getting more recognition than I thought it might, so I'm actually going to lean towards The Revenant or even Carol. Carol is just crushing it, particularly with Kate Blanchett and Rooney yeah. Mara, but that movie overall is getting really, really good reviews, and The Revenant is just a film experience unlike anything I've ever seen before. Before. So as much as I really did like Spotlight, I would say The Revenant would be my pick. You know what's, is what um, uh, Spotlight is reminding me of? Because you're pointing out it's sweeping everything. It wins Best Ensemble at the SAGs, mm -hmm. and all, or nominated for Best Ensemble at the SAGs, but it's not getting the actor. It reminds me a lot of Lord of the Rings Return of the King. Right. Nominated for 11 Academy Awards, and it won all 11 Academy Awards, but nom not nominated for one single acting award, mm -hmm. and it did the same thing at the SAGs that year. It w they weren't nominated for any of the individual categories, but they won for Best Ensemble. That's the first time I've ever heard Return of the King compared to Spotlight. Yeah, like, well, all the Hobbits got to get Gandalf out of there. <laughs> He's true. being creepy. Well, what I think it is, though, is that it's, it's so hard to lock down in that movie, like, who the star is like? I thought Leif Schreiber would get a nomination so for Best Supporting Actor. It was so good, yeah. but with Michael Keaton, Ruffalo, Rachel McAdams, they all balance each other out. It's I bet you it's hard to pick. Um, but as far as Best Picture goes, I agree with John. I think that Spotlight is going to clean up. I think Spotlight's going to win at Golden Globe. I think it's going to win at the Oscars. I think it's just one of those movies this year. It's one of my favorites of the year, I'm, and I'm waiting to see if it's going to, as I make my list, if it's going to be the top one, the top three. But it's a phenomenal movie. But I'm surprised that Mad Max was nominated really yeah I'm surprised I mean it's great I'm glad that it was but and but it, it Golden Globes make I guess makes more sense I don't think it's gonna be nominated for the Oscar but I think the fact that it was nominated for Golden Globes that's great great for Miller great for film in general that that, that film could get nominated um, and the revenant makes sense to me but I want to see Carol because I'm hearing a lot about you it. have 10 spots at the Oscars it Pret doesn't it, 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 ten potential yeah. slots I think because of this I, I think agree. Mad Max gets a little bit of momentum and might be nominated for best picture Interesting. I agree and and the one other thing about that was the uh, with Mad Max. I'm not surprised it's nominated. I am surprised that the Golden Globes, which are a joke, but I am surprised that the Golden Globes put it in the drama category because it seems like anything, any movie that isn't straight British period piece, musical or comedy, they put under musical or well, comedy. It's pretty, pretty hard to defend how <laughs> Mad Max would be a comedy though. But yeah, I, 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 I totally understand would. what you're saying. Wait yeah. until we see the list of nominees for musical and well, comedy. Well, you it's know why they could have made it a musical because of the guy with the guitar. That's, That's right. right. Yeah, it's totally could have totally been justified. Yeah. All right, what's the next category? Best performance by an actress in a motion picture drama. Kate Blanchett, Carol, Brie Larson, Brooklyn, Rooney Mara, Carol, Saoirse Ronan, Brooklyn, and Alicia Vikander, The Danish Girl. Um, I am honestly torn between Kate Blanchett and Rooney Mara. They were both so good in this. And, you know, I've loved Rooney Mara ever since we saw her in The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. I wasn't all that thrilled. What was the name of the movie she did with... Uh, Side uh, effects? Side effects. Thank you very much with uh, Gambit there. Yeah, um, <laughs> so it was it was such, such a surprise to see her get that role and how she did it. I'm going to lean towards Kate Blanchett, though. What about you, Mark? I'm worried that there's going to be a split between Kate Blanchett and Rooney Mara, a lot like what you're going through and where people might pick Brie Larson instead. I have yet to see Room, but I hear she is absolutely 
phenomenal in there. And people enjoy when a star breaks out and gets to the next level that Rooney Mar and Kate Blanchett already are at. I still think Kate Blanchett is the front runner here. I'm I need to catch up on some of these movies though too. So my my opinion from what I'm about to say now could change after I see everything else. Alicia Vikander is absolutely spectacular in the Danish girl. I think she outshines Eddie Redmayne in the movie. Um I think she's got a good shot to win. All right, what's next? Best performance by an actor in a motion picture drama, Brian Cranston, Trumbo, Leonardo DiCaprio, The Revenant, Michael Fassbender, Steve Jobs, Eddie Redmayne, The Danish Girl, and Will Smith, Concussion. It's really interesting seeing Will Smith get a, a nomination there, which which is, is nice to see. I believed it before. I still believe it. I think Michael Fassbender is going to get this, uh, mm. despite the fact that it's not exactly the most beloved movie of the year at all. He just carries it. Like, he single-handedly carries it, so I'm still going to go with Fast. That is a strong list. I like yeah. seeing Super all those list, names yeah. up there. I'm still going with my boy Leo for The Revenant. I think he's winning everything besides the awards he's already not won. <laughs> I, think, uh, I, think it's, I think it's a two-man race between Leo and Eddie Redmayne, and I think Eddie Redmayne will get it. I think that not only, and whether or not it's this is how it should be judged or not, but I also think because of, of everything that, that has been happening um, this year alone, with Bruce Jenner and everything too in the way that uh, I think that this could be a movie that for what he does for what Eddie Redmayne does in the film it's a powerful role it brings a lot of information that I had never known before and he does it he does that same type of thing that he did when he played uh, when, he, when he won last year for, for playing uh, I was going to say Bill Gates uh, <laughs> when he played Bill Gates Thanks, Bill Gates yeah, when he won, when, Theory of Everything yeah thank you when he won for Theory of Everything he, it, he brought a lot of new information that I did not know about um, this story okay. so yeah I think that he, I think he could um, he could win it alright what's next Best motion picture, musical, or comedy, The Big Short, Joy, The Martian, Spy, and Trainwreck. I'm not really sure how Joy is considered a uh, comedy, musical, or comedy. It had a couple of grins. and it had De Niro a made me laugh a few times, but I mean. Uh, yeah, I, I still don't understand that one myself. Look, if you're going to go... I'm going to go with what it should be, a musical or comedy. So I'm going to say Trainwreck, because it's the only legit comedy on this entire list. The Big Short has some smiles. Joy has some smiles. The Martian has some smiles. Spy, Spy is, is another comedy, legit yeah. one. Spy is legit. But so to me, the only two real legit contenders in this category are Spy and Trainwreck. And I will go Trainwreck, although it will not win, but that's my pick. I, I don't think you should be so fast to say it will not win. I think Trainwreck has a good shot of winning. It's the Golden Globes. That's and, true. And, yeah, good and point. they love Amy Schumer right now. And the movie was really well written. I don't necessarily, like I've said, I don't necessarily love her, but I can't take away from the fact that it was a really well written movie and it was a lot of fun. And it had more heart than just being a straight up comedy. Yes, it did. As where Spy was still a good movie, had a lot more of that Paul Fee comedy in it, which is why we and went to go And compared to the other films on the list, it had a lot more LeBron James. And LeBron James yeah. is really funny, though. <laughs> yes, so I think all that stuff adds in. I think Trainwreck's going to win it. All right. I'm a fan of every film in this category, and this category is so stupid, it yeah. makes my head hurt. It <laughs> yeah. is ridiculous it to is. call these movies comedies or musical. Never has it been more apparent to me that this category is just a backup. This is the bottom five of the best movies of the year, and they didn't have room to put The Martian or The Big Short or something else into the best picture. It is so dumb, but it's the Golden Globes, and we expect that because we all get hammered watching celebrities get even <laughs> drunker. Trainwreck has a shot. I still think it's going to be either The Big Short or The Martian because the those movies deserve to be recognized more than Trainwreck. All right, next category. Best performance by an actress in a motion picture, musical or comedy. Jennifer Lawrence, Joy. Melissa McCarthy, Spy. Amy Schumer, Trainwreck. Maggie Smith, The Lady in the Van. And Lily Tomlin, Grandma. Uh, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna stick on the same train I've been on. I'm gonna go Amy Schumer. Uh, Amy Schumer. Yeah. <laughs> She's probably called herself that. <laughs> yeah. For train wreck, I, that's gonna be my pick. Once again, I don't actually think she'll win, but that is my pick. What, <laughs> I'll say the same thing that I just said to you. I don't think you should be so fast to say she's not gonna win. I think she's gonna win. I think Amy Schumer will win the, the Golden Globes. She is made for the Golden Globes. That, this, this is, is true. This, this is someone like for you're the gold for for the Farm Press and and everyone there that is that is voting for um for Golden Globes. It's a party. It's a big yeah. party. They're going to want her to win, and they're going to want her to give some funny, silly speech well, you know at the what? end. She's going to be the only celebrity there. Who, I guarantee you this. She'll be the first That's celebrity That's it. She's the only one. Up. Just one person. <laughs> she'll be the only one. She will get up there whenever she, it's her turn on stage, and she will roast Ricky Gervais back. Probably, and she'll be she's, bombed. Yeah, and she'll be bombed. Uh, yeah, so and I, possibly high. I think she's going to win. Yeah. 
I think it's Maggie Smith versus Lily Tomlin in the <laughs> oldest fight since Grumpy Old Men. It's a combined 387 years of just pure, we want to win something power. Because like, sleeping. it's a Lifetime Achievement Award for them. And Lily Tomlin and Maggie Smith, both by all accounts, gave great performances. I do agree with you guys that they, they so want Amy Schumer to get on stage somehow. She probably will end up presenting an award. And that way she can be on stage and have some yucks with Ricky Gervais. But I think it's either one of those two. Aged hens. <laughs> I love Maggie Smith. <laughs> Aged How hens. Dare you speak smack, so please, Maggie Smith? Will someone please make a poster? <laughs> Aged hens. <laughs> Please, I beg of you. It's an agent head you, you don't want to know when when you're when you're talking on <laughs> directed camera, by Miller, George it, Miller. The, the way I work is that I always have a starter comment. I have a backup in case that one's too risky. <laughs> then I have a third place. That was the one that was in the hole. Yeah. And agent Hens made it out. Oh man! <laughs> All right, next category. Have you seen the Agent Hens? Best performance <laughs> by an actor in a motion picture, musical, or comedy. Christian Bale, The Big Short. Steve Carell, The Big Short. Matt Damon, The Martian. Al Pacino. Chino, Danny Collins, and Mark Ruffalo, Infinitely Polar Bear. Yeah, I, I'm going to admit, I haven't seen Infinitely Polar Bear. I have not seen that one, so I, it's difficult for me to comment. My pick on this is going to be Matt Damon for The Martian, because I really did think he was spectacular in the film. I think he gets overlooked for how good he actually really is in this movie, so he's my pick. But... I think a lot of people are going to count out Al Pacino. For hey, the baby. <laughs> there it What's is. What's going <laughs> on? I, he was awesome yeah, in that he was. movie. He was awesome in that movie. So my pick is still Matt Damon, but don't count out Al Pacino. Mark, what about you? I, I like Pacino. I think the big short is going to cancel each other out. And you're right. I want to go Damon, if nothing else, because it, I go back to the Martian being recognized for something. And Matt Damon deserves something from the Golden Globes. Uh, you got to count me out. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that Steve Carell is going to win it. I think Carell was incredible in the big short and he did hit comedy moments and he did there's something about what he did in this role that i thought because he was also in that movie with ellen page this year and um julianne moore where i thought he just, he wasn't good i thought he over he overdid it and i thought he was so great in when and it was last year or two years ago when he was playing fox the, we, yeah mm -hmm. but that was yeah. like two years ago right when, when it was last year last year in yeah. yeah. fox catcher this guy's getting so much better in everything he does. We know that he's a comedy force, but his his acting in general, I think he's going to be recognized for this. But one. here's the thing. He's a comedic actor by trade that went yeah. more serious in the big short. There were some yucks that he had for sure, but it was a serious performance. Matt Damon is a guy who we we accept in drama and action movies. He was hilarious at parts yeah. in The yeah, Martian. He was. Not funny enough to make the movie a comedy, right. but he still, <laughs> I, he was funnier than Steve Carell was in the big short. I know that they're very different movies. They're not both trying to get laughs, but I think Damon, that's why he gets the edge. But it's also, but it's not just about best comedy performance so it's just best performance in general I yeah. but i think i think damon's got a great shot to win all right next category best motion picture animated anomalisa the good dinosaur inside out the peanuts movie and sean the sheep movie straight up i love all these films i, I love and then, in a lot of years um whenever you get a best animated list it's usually two if you're lucky three that you really like and the other two are just there to fill up the space and thing these are all great. Right. We're not booing like we did with Brave when it won. Yeah, exactly. Right. No, <laughs> these are all great. And I'm still going to go. I, I'm still going with Inside Out. It's still in my top two or three favorite films of the year in general. So I'm going to go Inside Out. My emotions are conflicted right now because <laughs> I, I have made the argument that Inside Out is the best picture of the year, period. I'm kind of pulling for Peanuts now because I fell so in love with Peanuts. I still, so good. So I still good. think it's going to be it's Inside so Out, but I'm, I'm happy Snoopy is going to give Inside Out a run for their money. This is a great list, such a great list, and I think Inside Out is going to win. I would cheer if the Peanuts won, but I would be super happy if Sean the Sheep pulled out the gonna say Sean the Sheep. I loved Sean the Sheep. It was so good, and it was, and I just thought it was going to be one of those movies. I took my daughter to, and I'm just like, kind of painfully, like I did with Home, just painfully yeah, getting yeah, through it. Yeah. I was just, I forgot my daughter was there. Yeah, go go get snacks. I'm watching Shaun the Sheep. It was Shaun the Sheep was great. I really, really enjoyed it. This, this, I haven't seen my daughter since. Snacks. This, this, I haven't seen her since. This is a testimony to how good this list is. I think Shaun the Sheep, which I really enjoyed, 
is the worst film on this list. That's how good wow. this list is. That's yeah. how good it is. All right, next category. Best performance by an actress in a supporting role in any motion picture. Jane Fonda, Youth. Jennifer Jason Lee, The Hateful Eight. Helen Mirren, Trumbo. Alicia Vikander, Ex Machina. And Kate Winslet, Steve Jobs. Gotta go uh, Helen Mirren uh, for Trumbo. She's just, she's, uh, she's automatic. She's becoming... Like, look, Streep is still the queen of the hill. Streep is still absolutely the queen <laughs> of the hill. Streep monster. But Helen Mirren is becoming the female version of Daniel Day-Lewis. Whenever she appears in anything, you might as well just pencil her in on your calendar in the, when award season comes around because she always brings it. She's completely automatic, and she was amazing in Trumbo, one of the best parts of the film, to be honest. So uh, I'm going to go with Mira. If she's Mike Tyson, I'm going to say Jennifer Jason Lee is Buster <laughs> Douglas. Yeah. I think it's so exciting to see her back and the way that she has yeah. come back in The Hateful Eight. Now, full disclosure, I have not witnessed The Hateful Eight yet. I hope to see it in 70 millimeter very soon. Everything I'm hearing, all the buzz from from it is that Jennifer Jason Lee is one of the standouts in a cast that is pretty damn impressive. Well, she's got the story. It seems like th this is the story that awards love to give. If it's a if it's a really great performance, that it's possible she's she could pull it out because I'm hearing the same thing that Mark's hearing is how great she is and she just blows you away and she hasn't been around for a while. And it's the same thing like last year with um, with Boyhood with Patricia Arquette. Yeah, you know she came back. People love the comeback story when there's a really good performance behind it. But I also think, and I said it before too, I think Alicia Vikander has a shot with this one as well. Ex Machina, I mean, you believe that this girl is this machine with these emotions and what she did. It's not, and it could have just been such a drab performance, and it wasn't. You, you, you understood why Donald Gleason was infatuated with her. So I think it's between the two of them. All right, next category. Best performance by an actor in a supporting role <coughs> in any motion picture. Paul Dano, Love and Mercy. Idris Elba, Beast of No Nation. Mark Rylance, Bridge of Spies. Michael Shannon, 99 Homes. And Sylvester Stallone, Creed. Love that they put Sylvester Stallone in here. I, I am still, look, if I'm an Academy voter, Sylvester Stallone gets a nomination at the Academy Awards for his portrayal. Of his. But the winner is going to be Paul Dano. Uh, the winner's going to be Paul really? Dano for Love and Mercy. Um, so, yes, there is your winner for that. So let's just move on. We're, well, no, I'm yeah. just kidding, kidding. Mark, what do you think? You know, I, w with my heart, I definitely would vote Sylvester Stallone. But you're right, Paul Dano, I, which I saw recently, Love and Mercy, he's just phenomenal as Brian Wilson, where it's great to see Beast of No Nation get recognized by somebody like the Golden Globes, as we mentioned yesterday. Yeah. Mark Rylance was amazing yeah, was. as In the Bridge of Spies. Spies. Yeah. Bridge of Spies. But uh, I think Paul Dano is going to win, but my God, I want to see Sylvester It Stone reminds you, when you watch Love and Mercy, it reminds you that, oh yeah, uh, There Will Be Blood wasn't just Daniel Day-Lewis. Like, you forget how good Paul Dano was in that because he's acting alongside arguably the greatest right. actor to ever walk the face of the earth. And then you get to see him shine a little bit more here. And yeah, it really stood out to me. It, yeah, I, I have to see. I have it at home and I need to watch it because I, I hear he's so good in it. But I was, I'm was i still looking at the list, waiting for Benicio Del Toro for Sicario. Sicario to yeah. <laughs> Where, where's he and where's Tom Hardy from The Revenant? But they're not in there. Do, who do I want to win? Stallone, hands down, want to see Stallone win. I think that actually it, uh, Paul Dano has a really good shot, but I wouldn't be surprised if Michael Shannon pulls it off too because oh, he yeah. was really Do good. Don't count out Michael Shannon. Shannon. Although I, think I like the quality of the movie. It, Love and Mercy is such a better film than 99 for Homes us, but, that I but, think it gives it the edge. For us, uh, that that's the key. But a lot of other people and critics loved that movie. So it, that, Did they really? I know. They loved it. So wow. I, I think that it's a matter of, uh, you know, who. don't count him out, although I would have liked to have seen him him been nominated for the the one he just did uh, the night before. Oh right, <laughs> right, right. right. I'm talking about musical like, comedy. Where was the night before? All right, final Skunks. category. Best director, motion picture. Todd Haynes, Carol. Alejandro Inarritu, The Revenant. Tom McCarthy, Spotlight. George Miller, Mad Max: Fury Road, and Ridley Scott, The Martian. I am. Wow. Good choice. Totally low. This is the most loaded category this year. Yeah. Last couple of years has been the best lead actor category, has been the most loaded year, the most packed year, the, the, the year where there's going to be some very, some guys who directed films that in any other year would have gotten an Academy Award nomination, but this year there just ain't room at the end. Look at this list. It's, I mean, look at it's this. It's one of the best lists I've ever like, seen. Like Ridley Scott deserves a Gold Globe. He deserves an Academy Award for what he did with The Martian. 
but he directed it unfortunately in the same year that George Miller directed Mad Max and more importantly he directed it in the same year that Tom McCarthy directed Spotlight and I, I, when you just look at the direction of Spotlight I talked about this the other day that is a movie that could have gotten out of hand very quickly with the amount of characters the amount of facts the amount of information constantly flying McCarthy found a way to tell that story in a paced deliberate coherent way that just brought you along with it the entire time Miller deserves an Oscar Ridley deserves an Oscar Alejandro deserves another Oscar Todd Haynes deserves another Oscar but unfortunately only one can get it uh, and we're talking about the Golden Globes here but it's going to be McCarthy they all deserve it yeah they do it's, it, what a list for sure but I think that I mean I totally agree with you what you're saying because you watched The Revenant though and you watched yeah. The Way in Interrupt, Interrupt to directs and the performances he gets out of both DiCaprio and Hardy and the, the working with his cinematographer who should be recognized as well too it, it's a simple story but he makes it it's just you're in it you're you're there the way he transports you but what you're saying with spotlight is, I think is what nailed it is to take all those personalities tell that story that could have easily been like well this is so deep and I feel so kind of dirty Heavy watching and it dense and, and, um, yeah. but I didn't I felt like I, I felt like a, a hope and a fact that, that that you know and an encouragement to the media of, of to be used for good and the way he told this story and the way he used his actors and just like you're saying the pacing of it so i would have to say he should get the the win i mean it seems like and from what a lot of us are picking too is that we're leaning towards movies that have a little something to say that's either political or social and while all these films have that in their theme somewhere it's most obvious in spotlight and Carol, I think Spotlight would get the tiebreaker over Carol. Having said all that, I still think what Inaratu did with The Revenant and what George Miller did with Mad Max, yeah. those are the two ones that I would love to see. So I'm going to go ahead and guess with my heart. I'm going to say Inaratu wins for The Revenant. All right, well, that'll do it for our Golden Globe nominees. Let's move on to the next topic of the day. All right, a brand new and presumably final international trailer for next week's Star Wars The Force Awakens hit the web yesterday. The new trailer contains many shots we've already seen before, but there are also a few more shots we've yet to see as well. The Force Awakens officially opens in theaters on the 18th. Christian, what do you think of this new Star Wars trailer? Um, it's I was with Mark, and we were both like, oh, we're going to see it next week. Do we have to watch another one? <laughs> and then you... If you put a camera on our faces when we're watching, we're <laughs> uh, there's a great shot. I mean, you have finally, finally, this is the first and shot we've seen of Han Solo flying the Falcon. Yes, it was. Are you kidding me? I mean, how do you not love this trailer? It's it's a, it's it show, and even even it's the first time that we've actually seen that Kylo Ren is sitting in front of that helmet. We have assumed it, but you see him get up, you see his back turn, yeah. and there he is. He's by he's by the helmet, and there's more. I'm going to show him the dark star. Let's crush the resistance. There's more to it. It's the plot. It's like. Hey, humps, we're about a week away. Get ready for this battle. And so that's really what it was. And then that shot that we just showed just now of that planet and the ships going in and, and you the classic feel of Star Wars is something big's coming at the end. I love the trailer. It was amazing. Yeah, I was the same boss. Like, I don't want to watch. Right. I've been skipping a couple of TV spots. Mm -hmm. So when a new full international trailer comes out, I almost <coughs> didn't bother watching it. But I was like, all right. <laughs> and this was a lot like a second version of a trailer that we traditionally get with other movies. It was a lot of what we got in the other trailer with a couple of key differences. One of the things that I absolutely loved was Ray walking with BB-8. She says, where are you from? He's blah, 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 blah. And he's like, she's like, that's classified. Me too. Right. And I thought, okay, I think that was actually very, not only was it a cute exchange, I think it was very revealing. Yeah. But I was telling Mark and Christian before we started the show that a scene in this trailer has supplanted for me Han Solo saying Chewie were home as my favorite moment in a trailer this year. And it was replaced once again by Han Solo piloting the Millennium Falcon and talking to the Falcon. Yeah. Come on, baby. Like, yeah. like I loved it. I was like in my chair. I was shaking. I rewound just that one spot over and over again to hear him talking to the Falcon. Awesome. I absolutely, I don't know if you I'm glowing. I was so happy to see it. So excited to see it. And we are just, what are we? We are Almost Friday, there. Saturday, Sunday, four days away. We are four days away from seeing, you'll be hearing our non-spoiler review for Star Wars Force Awakens on Monday late night uh, after we get back from the premiere four days away. Unbelievable. Anyway, Mark, what do you think about the Monday trailer? just cannot get here fast enough. I didn't want to watch this trailer. I did. I like that they didn't give away too much. I was concerned because of the, the other international trailer that had so many new scenes, which I loved watching at the time. Now that we're so close to seeing the movie, I'm glad that they held back with as much stuff as they probably 
could have shown us the one thing that I took away from this trailer. I love the Han Solo line, by the way. I say it to my Ford Fusion every morning. <laughs> is at the beginning of this trailer, we really got to see that Kylo Ren is positioned as the bad guy in this movie. Now, we know or we, we suspect somebody else is pulling the strings behind him, but he is the guy that's going to be kicking the majority of ass in this movie. All right, what's next? We're going into buy or sell. All right, buy yeah. or sell. So what's first? The first official poster for the upcoming X-Men. I'm starting off by the Golden Globes. <laughs> the X-Men Apocalypse movie has hit the web, which you can see here. Along with the re revelation of the poster, 20th Century Fox has also announced that the first trailer for the film will arrive tomorrow. X-Men Apocalypse hits theaters on May 27th. Mark, buy or sell this first poster for the new X-Men film. I buy it. I mean, the tagline, only the strong will survive, It's it's kind of, been that way for the majority of the X-Men movies. It's not like, oh, they're not they're gonna kill weaklings in this one. Like you gotta be you got you gotta be a front runner to step up to Apocalypse. So I like the I'm nervous about the trailer coming out tomorrow. I'm nervous about the look of Apocalypse and the internet backlash that may or may not happen. But just the poster alone, it looks awesome. We know that classic X logo and then the fact that it's it looks like it's under fire from something. Pretty cool. Yeah, there there are post the posters I really love the most are the ones that in one frame capture the spirit or essence or tell you something about that particular movie. But then there are other kinds of posters that I personally I call conceptual posters. That's not really showing you anything in the movie. It's just like a concept, here you go. I love the concept. Like Apocalypse is coming, he's bringing doom and destruction and that's why half the X is kind of burned yeah. up. But also only the strongest survive. I love the tagline because that's Apocalypse. Survival of the strongest. The culling of the weak. That is the whole motto of Apocalypse. So them throwing that in there as a tagline, I thought it was a really nice nod to the comic book character. And I, I'm with you. I am nervous about, look, I, I'll tell you right now, I'm not happy with the look of Apocalypse. But that doesn't mean the character's not gonna be great, and it doesn't mean the movie's not gonna be great. I mean, I like the look of them. That's what, I, I still didn't like the look of uh, Quicksilver in X-Men Days of Future Past, but he was an awesome character nonetheless. Right. So I agree, nervous about the look of Apocalypse, but I'm hoping the trailer gets us past that. What about uh, you? I buy the poster for sure, and what it also showed to me is that it really ties in Everything that we've been doing here since 2000 with this, because I remember the, the first poster for Brian Singer's version and when he first debuted X Men, what he's been connected to this franchise for a very long time. He's obviously connected to it now. He's following up Days of Future Past, and you have this poster with the clean on the left and what we know of X Men. And then it's just like, yeah, it ain't all daisies and roses. I mean, half of them are going to die. I don't know what's going to happen. Know? I think but, some of them are going to yeah, die. I think yeah. we're going to be, yeah, it's, it's closing out here to where they're going to have to do very similar to what the Avengers will eventually have to do is transition new people in and introduce new mutants that we're going to get behind because you have to eventually because there's only so long Wolverine's going to be around unless you recast them. Um, but I love the poster. I think it sets up exactly what we're about to see in tomorrow's trailer. I'm very excited about tomorrow's show now. Yeah. We're talking about the, the X-Men Apocalypse you guys think trailer. He, do you guys, because you know it's been rumored that oh Wolverine's not going to be in Apocalypse and maybe he'll be oh, in there a little bit. There. Do you think you see him tomorrow? No. No, I don't think you're going to show him in the trailer. Yeah. I'll be jumping up and down if he is, so but, but I don't think he will be. <laughs> All right, what's next? The first full-length trailer for the upcoming Sasha Baron Cohen, Mark Strong comedy The Brothers Grimsby, has hit the web. In the film Nobby, Sasha Baron Cohen has everything a man from Grimsby could want, including 11 children and the most gorgeous girlfriend in the northeast of England, Rebel Wilson. <laughs> There's only one thing missing his little brother, Sebastian Mark Strong, who Nobby has spent 28 years searching for after they were separated as kids. Nobby sets off to reunite with Sebastian, unaware that not only is his brother MI6's deadliest assistant, assassin, but he's just uncovered plans for an imminent global terrorist attack. John Byer saw this new trailer for the Brothers Grimsby. I buy it a lot more than I thought I was going to, to be honest with you. Like I thought, I've been reading the premise, I've been buying the premise of this for a long time, but it's, it's still always been a little bit iffy with me. I like that first little teaser they put out when you saw Sasha Baron Cohen and uh, Rebel Wilson in the bed having sex and you realize they're doing it in a department store. I thought that was kind of funny, but I really bought into it. I love the setup with the two little orphans at the beginning and where the story went. The whole thing when he finally hugs him and he shoots and kills the wrong guy. I don't know why. I really enjoyed the trailer, so for me it's a buy. I'm going to sell it, but with the hopes that none of the funny moments were in the trailer. I'm gonna hope like a, you know I'm gonna hoping like a lot of these, a lot of times I show all the great bits in the trailer and there were a couple of times that I laughed in this trailer for sure but there weren't any of those moments that I was like oh man this is hysterical um, I still think it's got a lot of potential I like both these guys I think it's a really good teaming for the two of them as well both Mark Strong and Sasha Baron Cohen I think will be could be a great team up and it's 
it's that perfect mix almost kind of it reminds me of what spy was going for as well so i think that there can be some good stuff in it i just the trailer itself just didn't make me laugh that much yeah if we're reviewing trailers on movie talk that's time for me to turn into a sourpuss mm-hmm. i'm gonna sell this one too oh. i just I'm, I'm on the same page as christian where there's a lot of potential in this movie i'm not selling the fact that i don't want to see the movie I'm, i i could be excited about this film it just didn't make me laugh enough i giggled a couple times in the trailer but there was a lot of footage in there i mean this thing was over two minutes and it just didn't look like there was going to be a lot of room <laughs> For that much comedy, uh, Sasha Baron Cohen and Rebel Wilson look hysterical. Mark Strong could be funny like a Jason Statham in Spy. This could be this year's Spy, and I hope it is. It's just the trailer itself didn't engage me as much as I wanted. I love when comedies don't give away too many of the laughs in the trailer, but you got to give me a little more than you did. All right, what's next? Wouldn't you guys like to see Sasha Baron Cohen try a different type of comedy? Like one where he is legitimately looking like himself? Because I think he has so much potential. He's hilarious. Without but being I'm a character? So, yeah. yeah. I, I wanted, to see, see I wanted yeah. to see him do Freddie Mercury. I wanted to see him do Freddie Mercury. Oh, I was really wanting. But I, but I like what Ashley's saying, too. Like to see him do comedy because he's so great in comedy, but playing a guy. Yeah. Not, not playing the dictator, not playing. Yeah, yeah. Like, like not playing a caricature of something like he is here. I'd be fascinated to see him do a straight, him and Steve Carell. See him and Steve, totally. Steve Carell like do a straight up comedy. I would yeah, love to love see that. that. All right, might as well call this trailer day because the first official trailer for the upcoming Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles sequel, Out of the Shadows, hit the web. This first trailer gives us our first good look at the classic characters Bebop and Rocksteady. Christian, buy or sell this first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles trailer. This is really tough. I think that for, for, for me personally, if I'm watching the trailer, I'm selling it because I just I didn't like the first one. Um, I, it just It's not doing anything for me as far as what... It's anything that I, if I wasn't doing this, if I wasn't part of the movie space and just, I just randomly as a fan of the movies that I like, this came on, I wouldn't want to see this movie. It didn't sell me on it at all. That being said, I think that if I was a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle fan of the cartoons, not necessarily the comic books, I would be super excited for this movie. I think that it's it, it, what it did, what it does do, at least in the trailer that the first one didn't do, is it seems like the focus is all on the turtles. As we're in the in the first movie, it was like here's April and the turtles, and then in the movie it was more about April and then some of the turtles, except that elevator scene, which was cool. Um, but in this in this one, it seems like you have the classic villains. So I think as a Teenage Mutant Ninja nostalgic fan of the Saturday morning or the cartoon or the Nickelodeon show. I can understand what people are excited, but personally, it's a sell for me. Yeah, I hated it. Yeah. I hated it. And I'm one of the very few idiots in the world who defends the first one. I actually enjoyed the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And I think the reason I enjoyed it was because, look, I'm not a fan of the Saturday morning cartoon Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I'm a fan of the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the black and white comic books. I'm a big, if you haven't read those, find them and read them because they're really, really fun to read. But I think what I liked about the last one is that they took the Saturday morning cartoon Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and then mixed it in with some of the flavor of the original black and white stuff to the point that I walked out having had a good time. I watched this trailer and I gotta say, I loved the um, I loved the Stephen Amell stuff in it. I thought th- that's gonna work out great. I thought he th- bringing him in I think is gonna be great. I love the little sequence of him using the hockey stick and the pucks to take out the bad guys. I think that can work pretty well. It's good to see the turtles again. I, I was encouraged to hear they're, they're going to use Bebop, Bebop and Rocksteady, but they look so bad. Cartoony. Car, they, yeah. they look cartoony. And I'm not talking about the design of the characters, per se. No. Although the, the design is still pretty cartoony. <laughs> I'm talking about the animation and the actual CGI. It looked outrageously fake. And the turtles themselves, when you see them in the last movie... They look very photorealistic. And then in this trailer, I'm looking at Bebop and Rocksteady, and it looks like 2004 visual effects Mm. to me. And it kind of just looks like this movie is moving away from that mixture of like the flavor, the the darker tone of the original black and white and the kitty show, and it's just going all childish. And maybe that's just the trailer. There have been a number of trailers that have been terrible, that the movies come out and the movies are actually pretty good. The last Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, I thought the trailers for that movie looked terrible. Right. And, the, and I actually ended up enjoying the movie. I hope that's the case here, but just on the trailer for me, I gotta sell it. I've just been down on trailers recently and luckily the turtle showed up to make me buy the hell out of this trailer. <laughs> I loved it. I grew up on the cartoon. This is everything that fans of that cartoon are gonna want on the big screen. Sing Bebop and Rocksteady. I thought they looked just as good as the turtles did. And I thought the turtles looked pretty damn good. They looked on par with what I saw in the previous movie. The previous movie, I did have some 
problems with. I enjoyed it overall. I think this one is going to be more the tone that I want. More yucks, not from Will Arnett and Megan Fox, but from the actual Turtles going up against Bebop and Rocksteady. If I could give you guys your choice, would you rather take maybe the not great CGI Bebop and Rocksteady, or would you take more Will Arnett humor? I think you're going with the I, mute. I, I, yeah, I like absolutely. Will Arnett, <laughs> but I, I do like, want to see Bebop and Rocksteady. I do yeah. want to see them, I had a but I want them to look good. I had a huge problem with Will Arnett in the first movie. I actually laughed at his line. It was a good line. One. It was when, a good line. When, when what he was said, his line again? Oh, where are the turtles? Oh, you always stay with the turtles. You always oh, stay with the turtles. Right. That was, was good. That was a good line. Um, but yeah, I just think it, it's no offense, Mark. I just think it's, it, it looks like it's geared towards 10 years old, 10 year olds. This movie. Yeah. Like, None taken. Yeah. I'm glad I can celebrate my youth a little bit more. Yeah. Other than you old hams on here, go hang out with, with Helen Mirren. And, yeah, uh, go hang yeah. out with those old hams. It's funny that yeah. I'm the one who defends the first one. I yeah. like the first one. But I don't like this trailer. You're not so big in the first one, but you do like. But this we trailer. can. I I I I rated the first one fresh, barely, because I like the turtles <laughs> and I like their interaction. The overall story didn't engage me as much as I wanted it to. I think this one will, and I think we can all agree, Casey Jones looks kick ass in I this one. I think he one. looks great. Yeah, looks good. Th he looks that great. was the selling point of the trailer good to me. Cast, Bebop too. and Rocksteady were almost like the icing on the cake. All right, what's next? As many of you will remember, it was reported a few weeks ago that actor Matthew McConaughey was currently the top choice by Sony Pictures to play Randall Flagg in their upcoming The Dark Tower. Now, according to a report in Deadline, the studio may have their eyes on none other than Idris Elba to play Roland as Shane, a.k.a. the Gunslinger. Sony currently has The Dark Tower set for a January 13, 2017 release date. Mark, would you buy or sell Idris Elba in The Dark Tower? Ooh, that'd be a big buy. Now the only question I have is who would I rather see in a Dark Tower movie, McConaughey or Elba, or could we get both of those stars in there? Idris Elba, everything he does to me is very impressive. It touches the gold. He's nominated for a Golden Globe this year. I think he would knock this role out of the stadium. Huge huge buy. And for, first of all, if it's just Idris Elba maybe being in the Dark, dark Tower, buy. The potential of Idris Elba with Matthew McConaughey mm -hmm. in the Dark Tower are you crazy? That's This could be the best pairing of the year. Well, when is it going to come out? 2017 or something like that? Whatever. Whatever. Of that year. But I think when you're talking about combining acting talents like that in these types of roles in this type of a story, you have to be enthusiastic for it. Huge buy. And I'm so glad that he would get the opportunity to do this role because I think he'll crush it. It's, I don't think there. it's very rare that any time you say, buy or sell, Idris Elba doing this, that you're going to say sell. On Idris Elba, he's he's In Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Buy it, still buy it. I'm still <laughs> buying it. I'm buying everything that, that that with him right now because he's one of those guys. He's just electric to watch. He's he's a guy that he's a great actor and he's got movie star type level uh, energy. Like when you see him, you're just you're fixated on him. And I think that and it's ever since The Wire for me. Uh, he's just been one of those guys I've been wanting to follow more and more and more. And to see him do a movie like this, and like you guys are saying, to work with McConaughey, I mean, come on. And with bye. the best Stephen King works that have been either in book form yeah. or adapted to the big screen, you have characters who are either hero or villain adjacent. That you need, you need somebody who can bring a complexity to that role, so nobody would be better in that form than Idris Elba. And if you're a fan of Idris Elba, and you, you're a fan of the work he's done, and you have not seen his role in Steve Carell's The Office... Go and watch Idris Elba in The Office. It's a different side of him, and you'll eat it up. You'll love it. All right, what's next? Getting back to brand new trailers, the first official trailer for the latest incarnation of Edgar Rice Burroughs' iconic character Tarzan, The Legend of Tarzan, is now online. The film stars Alexander Skarsgård, Margot Robbie, Samuel L. Jackson, Christoph Waltz, and Jaiman Honsu. The film begins years after the man once known as Tarzan Skarsgård left the jungles of Africa behind for a gentrified life as John Clayton III, Lord Greystoke, with his beloved wife Jane Robbie at his side. Now he has been invited back to the Congo to serve as a trade emissary of parliament, unaware that he is a pawn in a deadly convergence of greed and revenge, masterminded by the Belgian captain Leon Rom Waltz. But those behind the murderous plot have no idea that they are about what they are about to unleash. John Byers sell this trailer for The Legend of Tarzan. First of all, I'm watching this trailer, and I could have sworn that was Taylor Kitsch. I could have sworn it was Taylor Kitsch. And I remember watching the trailer, I'm going... I thought Alexander Skarsgård was starring. I don't remember them switching up. But then I said, no, it's Alexander Skarsgård. He just looks a little bit different. Huge buy. I this, this was the surprise of the day to me. This trailer was the surprise of the day to me. I was not expecting anything very good. Even though Margot Robbie's in there and I like her, and I like Alexander Skarsgård, I like Christoph Waltz, but for whatever reason, there was just a stink to this project. 
the stink is gone. Tarzan's been overdone. That's he has been overdone yeah. and not and often not done well. The stink is gone. I, I watched this trailer. I was thoroughly impressed with it. I cannot. I now cannot wait to see this thing. So for me, it's a buy. Big buy for me as well too. And David Yates. Yeah, uh, directing, directing it. it. That to me was why, well, always why I don't think I was as cautious because I trust in David Yates right now. And to watch, the only problem I had with the trailer was that there are some parts of Tarzan that looked a little bit too CGI, but I think that could be fixed once the movie comes out as well. Um, Margot Robbie is out of control. I mean, I, I said, "Oh my to her, God, <laughs> she's." I mean, but not even as far as how stunning she is, but just she's an, another one of these up and coming actresses. This is a perfect role for her as Jane. I mean, when you when you think about it, you go, "Oh yeah, okay, her as Jane." And then with this trailer, I was a big fan of Legend of Greystoke, which is a Christopher Lambert movie. Yes, and it's it's not a great movie, but the beginning of it is really intense, and then it gets kind of dull, but it follows this same story. And I think that what it looks like in the trailer anyways, they, they, they spend a lot more time in the jungle and the origin story of Tarzan of getting through there. And then when he once gets back into civilization, um, we're going to spend as much time there. and It won't be as boring maybe as Greystoke was. So I love where they're going with this. Bye. Okay. A little game over under here. The number <coughs> is 2.5%. The number is 2.5%. The Caesar. chances we hear Margot Robbie refer to Tarzan as Puddin'. <laughs> I'm going way over 2.5%. Uh, under. <laughs> All right, Mark, your thoughts on the trailer. It's a buy for me as well, gentlemen. Finally, we get the sequel to Jungle to Jungle that we always wanted. <laughs> the Tim Allen classic with Jonathan Taylor Thomas, I believe, where he was a kid from the jungle and then he had to be in the big city. It's the same thing with Tarzan. We just get to see him in the jungle in this trailer, too, so that's why I liked it. This trailer was like watching a comic who I didn't expect to make me laugh really get me, but then it ran the light a little bit. After we saw the title Tarzan, I didn't like that they put put that other scene in there. I didn't want that scene yeah, in there. Yeah, I agree with you. That it, was a that was out of place. It with was the rest like of the it trailer. was a, get off stage. You, you had your big laugh. Now right. get the hell out of here. What I loved the most about the trailer was how they didn't they, they didn't rely too much on the Tarzan yell, but you heard it in right. the back. Right. That yeah. right. was so well, well done and I was worried at the end of the trailer they were just going to throw it out there front and center and they didn't. Brilliant job on that. I just didn't like when Doomsday showed up. <laughs> yeah. Bebop and Rocksteady look great in that jungle, though. All right. Last trailer of the day. Yes, our final new trailer for the day is the first official spot for the newest Steven Spielberg film, The BFG. Disney's The BFG movie tells the imaginative story of a young girl and the giant who introduces her to the wonders and pearls of giant country. Upon her arrival in giant country, Sophie, a precious 10-year-old girl from London, is initially frightened of the mysterious giant who has brought her to his cave, but soon comes to realize that the BFG is actually quite gentle and charming, and having never met a giant before has many questions. Mark Byer saw this trailer for the BFG. I, I buy the trailer, really liked it. I gotta be a jackass here. What does the F stand for? Friendly. Because, oh, okay. What is it? <laughs> Friendly. Friendly. Oh. I thought it might be something else that Ryan <laughs> sounds like fudging because it is a big effing giant that grabs this girl and takes her off somewhere. I'm so intrigued. It was a great way to build a teaser because we got to know this girl's world a little bit. And then at the end, you see that hand come in and it's like, oh, my God, where the hell are we going? I want to follow it, especially when you throw that name Steven Spielberg. He's pretty cool. I cannot be the only person that when I heard the title BFG, I was thinking this was going to be a Doom movie. Like, right? Like, that's what we all thought. It's the big fucking gun. <laughs> that's the BFG. I don't know how you get away with it. I, anyway, I thought I buy the trailer. I do. I like the trailer. Um, it was a very nice trailer in and of itself. But then you add the name Steven Spielberg to it and you look at the trailer. You And then you look at this trailer through Steven Spielberg colored glasses and you're like, oh, this could be brilliant. This could be really good. So I was impressed with it. I like it for me. It's a buy. Yeah, I, I buy it as well, too. You could. It, this was the thing with Bridge of Spies, which I thought was a good movie just not great didn't feel like it had that Spielberg magic to it like it didn't like I, I if you said to me Spielberg didn't direct that I'd be like okay that makes sense this one feels like Spielberg's magic already and I actually thought that scene when the giant actually discovers her start walking I was that was creepy mm -hmm. it, was, it was really and then she just hides under the bed and the hand comes in and it was a nice little fairy tale I'm a big fan of of Tintin as well too I thought Tintin was a great movie and this to me even though you know live action it felt like had that Tintin feel as well, so I, it was a buy. I'm yeah, excited. For kids it. are so stupid, you know. <laughs> kids are so stupid. That's it's just like, a generic truth. You're, for you're gonna hide under the covers with a giant hand. Get under the bed, dummy. There's no <laughs> monsters under there. It's a monster. It's gonna grab you if you hide under the covers. Pro tip. 
<laughs> All right, folks. Well, listen, it's Thursday, which means it's time for us to talk about what is opening this week, brought to you by our friends at AMC Theaters. Now, on Tuesday, we talked a little bit about uh, In the Heart of the Sea, and now we got a couple more to talk about. I'm going to let you guys know, too, right up right now, is that we're not going to have any mailbag questions today because we are running a little bit long, but we are still going to take some of your live <laughs> Twitter questions. So if you're watching us live right now, you can jump on Twitter and tweet to us at Collider Video, and then Ashley will pick out a couple of your tweets at the end of the show. But right now, let's get to what's opening this week. So Ashley, what do we got? First up, opening in limited release this week is The Big Short. When four outsiders saw what the big banks, media, and government refused to, the global collapse of the economy, they had an idea, The Big Short. Their bold investment leads them into the dark underbelly of modern banking where they must question everyone and everything. And expanding into wider release this week is Legend. Suave, charming, and volatile Reggie Cray, Tom Hardy, and his unstable twin brother Ronnie start to leave their mark on the London underworld in the 1960s. Using violence to get what they want, the siblings orchestrate robberies and murders while running nightclubs and protection rackets. With police detective Leonard Nipper Reed hot on their heels, the brothers continue their rapid rise to power and achieve tabloid notoriety. Christian, which of these films should audience be, audiences be looking forward to? Well, if you're a Tom Hardy fan and you really enjoy Hardy, obviously you're going to want to see him play this role because you can reference back to Jean-Claude Van Damme in uh, Double Impact. Uh, <laughs> but no, I think that it, he's getting a lot of buzz off these performances. I just hear the movie's not great. I want to see the movie, obviously, because I am a Tom Hardy fan, and I'm very curious. And I'm and gangster movies. I love gangster movies, so I want to see what he does as the Cray Twins. Now, The Big Short, on the other hand, is fantastic. I really enjoyed this movie. It is you got to you got to pay. It's one of those movies you got to pay attention to every word that is said, otherwise you will be lost. But the performances from Steve Carell, Christian Bale, Ryan Gosling, there are so many amazing performances, but you got to give credit to Adam McKay. When you yeah. hear that Adam McKay, the guy behind Funny or Die and comedies, you know, like Step Brothers and stuff, you're like, wait a minute, this guy's doing a movie about the economic crisis? What? Man, what a great job from him because he was fighting against people, not thinking he can do it, and he did it. And it's the same, based off the same uh, author, the guy who wrote Moneyball. Yep. And it is a movie that really surprised me. I was and the blind side. Yes. Yep. And I was, look, I was, I was, when you hear this cast, and when we talked about the trailer, of course you want to see the movie. But I was surprised with how much I liked it. And remember, though, also, this movie is like a horror film in, in certain points when you know what the banks were capable of. And when they tell you the things that happened with this crash, I was familiar with, with what was going on. I just didn't know to the extent, and it is terrifying. You know, I was so hyped to see Legend for so long because I want to see these hard but you're right all the reports I mean I haven't seen it, uh, Legend yet uh, but all the reports are that it's a mediocre film at, at best so that kind of put a temperament on that but I think it's still worth going to see just to see you know an actor like Tom Hardy pulling the double impact thing so that's pretty cool with um, the big short you have on paper the best ensemble cast of the year. Steve Carell, Ryan Gosling, Christian Bale, Brad Pitt. I mean, there you go. And the movie is fantastic. I mean, it lives up to its billing. Not not the best film of the year, I don't think, but it's going to be in the running, absolutely. So if you got to pick one this weekend, I'd say go for The Big Short. I don't know if I'm just lazy or too busy to see Legend. Like, it seems like that movie's been playing in limited release in LA for weeks, and I still just haven't made it to see a movie. I'm really looking forward to, and I agree with you, boys. By all accounts, it's not a great movie. It's not going to win an Oscar like Double Impact did. So I'm going to have to say, <laughs> The big short is just short of perfection when you're talking about what they're trying to convey in a film, the performances, the direction, everything about the big short. Now, it did not make me want to run out and read Michael Lewis's book because it seems pretty dense. There's a lot of numbers going around. It's the perfect theater experience, and here's why. Because when you're sitting in a movie theater, you're so focused on the action going on on screen. This is not a movie you wait for cable because commercials are going to come on, or if, if, if it's on HBO or something, you might be distracted by something else going on in your apartment. See this in a theater when you have nothing else to do and just focus on how scary that the housing crisis was all right folks well i said we'd save a little bit of time at the end of the show to take some of your live twitter questions and we're going to do that right now once again just tweet to us at collider video maybe you can get a question in still ashley what have you picked out jonathan peck writes could the big short be a major oscar contender um it will be a contender in a lot of different categories a major oscar contender as in like a front runners i don't think so i think if major oscar contender means 
someone that gets a lot something that gets a lot of nominations then yes it could be but as far as maybe but winning winning them I, it, there's just so much out there even when we were talking about when you look at that director category and all those things that fit into these categories there's just so much this year so I don't know. After that soliloquy I just gave, yeah, it should totally be an Oscar <laughs> contender. You know, the problem with this is, though, is that I think that it's getting put up against spotlight in a lot of people's minds because yeah. it's about a true life event that happened fairly recently with a great ensemble cast, and it seems like spotlight is getting ahead of the big short in that regard, but you should not overlook the big short. All right, what's next? Craig Dice writes, besides Star Wars, what are your favorite robots in movies? Oh, famous robots in movies. I, I would have to think about that. I, I can't pull a lot off the top of my head. I'll just go, um... Uh, Come on, man. Terminator. Terminator's yeah, Ter a robot. Terminator's a great one. Terminator's, Terminator's a great, great one. Uh, Robocop yeah. is half man, half machine, all cop. I'll go Iron Giant. Oh, that's a great one. Wally. Oh, oh, look at Ellis' yes, face. Look at Ellis' face. Uh, yes. The trash compact. I love Wally. Ellis hates not, You know the answer is not Johnny Five. That is the I most annoying Johnny robot Five. in the history of Stop robots it. on screen. That's why you hate oh, Wally. No, no. You know why? Rocky Four. That's the robot you Happy want because it brings Polly. you beer. <laughs> All right, what's next? <laughs> Jake Silva writes, Steven Spielberg has lost his touch. What do you think? You're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Rough. I see, Sorry, yeah, that's you asked. One. Uh, I see. I don't know if I'd go so far as idiot status, but I would say that I don't agree with it. I think that I understand as far as the um, him producing, he's throwing his name on a lot of stuff, and even with Bridge of Spies, didn't seem like that was the Spielberg that we knew, but Spielberg is one of the best if not the best of all time. He hasn't lost anything. Yeah, I mean, you want to say that because of Bridges Spies, which it felt like it lacked touch yeah. in a lot of ways, but Spielberg also very recently made me fall in love with a horse in World War One and Abraham Lincoln before that, and yeah. I think if you if you haven't, whoever wrote that, if you haven't seen the teaser for the BFG, yeah, like we just talked about, check that out, then come back and report to it. Okay, so the last number of films that Steven Spielberg has done, Bridges Spies, which is a very good film, but it was not as good as it could have been. Right. But I think everybody pretty much crossed the board. Yeah. It's a very it's good okay, film. Yeah. That's how, that's Steven Spielberg's Bad Day at the Office. A very good film that isn't going to win an Academy Award. That's his Bad Day at the Office. These are the last few ones he's done. War Horse, nominated for Best Picture of the Year. The Adventures of Tintin, a really underrated film that, that a lot of people love that movie. Uh, then before Adventures of Tintin, you had, uh, well, Indiana Jones and the King of the Crystal Skull. That's the one where that's I'll say the, that's he, the real lost. Bad day that's the, the bad. That's the real bad day. But then he had Munich, nominated for Best Film uh, at the Oscars. <laughs> War of the Worlds, which is really good. The Terminal, which a lot of people love. Catch Me If You Can, which was brilliant. Minority Report, which is brilliant. Uh, where do we go? Then Saving Private Ryan. Amistad, which I think is his best film is actually Amistad. I mean, wow, really? Like, wow. I think Amistad is his best film. Was oh, there wow. a shark attack in that boat? Yes, there was. No, <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say that's in there, really. Yeah, Jaws. Then you go to the old stuff, Jaws, ET, but, but that's just in the last ten years. Those films. I mean, so has he lost his touch? Are you kidding me? That's like, that's like I, I just that's just ridiculous. It's like saying watching going back at like fifteen or twenty years, seeing Michael Jordan shoot in one game, shoots gets twenty two points. Say, oh, Michael Jordan's lost it. What are you kidding? Last game he scored eighty one. What are you talking? Like it just it's a ridiculous. I, I think notion. that you can understand maybe also why maybe the question being asked is he like you said the last couple movies he's done. There hasn't been a lot. I mean, you look at someone like Clint Eastwood, who puts it like two a year, right? As where Spielberg does like one every like two or three years. So I think that you start to you start to forget of how great he is because you don't see his see his movies. And like John's saying, when his movies come out, even Bridge of Spies, it's like it's not it doesn't stink. The only one that I personally think stinks is Crystal Skull. Um, but other out than of that, the forty films he's uh, yeah, yeah 1944. I'm not a huge fan of nineteen forty two, but I, I but think 42. I think maybe the reason why the question is fair to at least pose in a bar before you might get punched out is the movies that he's done that have been really good the last few years. Uh, Bridges Spies was good. War Horse was great. Okay, Lincoln was great. But those aren't necessarily movies you think of when you think of Steven Spielberg, who started out with bigger, you know, blockbustery kind of family movies like an E.T., like Indiana Jones. So people want to see him go back to making a huge spectacle film like he crushed with Jurassic Park or Jaws or Close Encounters of the Third Kind. So when is he going to make another movie like that? Could it be the BFG? I really hope so. It's the other, it's the other one. It's the uh, Ready Player One. That's what he's going to come back yeah, and do. That, I think it's yeah. going to be great because that's what too. he'll do, man. He'll do Ready Player One, and then he'll do something like The Bridge of Spies, or even when he when he used to do, when he used to have War, War of the Worlds, Schindler's List. He's such a great filmmaker. He can do both those tones. There are not a lot of directors. that There's can do There's a reason that. why Steven Spielberg is the one act is the one director I should say in Hollywood. All the other directors go to. There's a reason why Jay, when, whenever J.J. Abrams has an idea about something, the first thing he does is he goes and sits in Steven right. Spielberg's office. When you're that guy, that 
other directors go and seek out. I mean, you're the man. Colin Trevorrow told, yes, told us this, yeah. that he, for the whole, you hear a lot of times someone's a producer on the film, they're collecting checks. Colin Trevorrow told Mark and myself that, that Spielberg was like the producer. He would call Spielberg every day to go over what was going on. And they had conversations back and forth. His door was open to get the ideas and the feel of the first one. He was very involved. Yeah, Jacob, did we answer your question? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take two more quick questions. All right, Amar al Afdal writes, did any of you guys see Macbeth? If so, how was it? I have, it's, a, it's, I have it. a screener it's, in my car. It's right out there. Yeah, yeah it's, it's right out there. It's awesome. Is it's it? it's okay, really good, awesome. Good, it's good. not gonna is, and most people aren't gonna see it. But uh, but it's, it's is, pretty is, is it the classic Shakespearean dialogue? Like, did they change the lines or did the actual lines? It's it's a it's Macbeth. I heard it's more brutal than you might. It was well, no. It, it is it is far more visceral than you would expect. Like you you hear Macbeth, and if you under if you know Macbeth, you know there's elements of that. But you kind of think it's a Hollywood version of it. It's going to be that it's visceral. It's brutal. And you're gonna you're gonna love it, wow. and it'll give you. Remember, this is the same just, actor, Creed. actress, and director combo. Actor, actress, and director that are also going to be doing Assassin's Creed. And when you watch them doing Macbeth, you're gonna have a lot of damn hope for <laughs> Assassin's That's Creed. That's what I was gonna ask. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What's well, the last question of the day? J O N writes, "What are your favorite lawyer movies? Mine is Lady in Gold and Find Me Guilty." Yeah, Find Me Guilty is great. Yeah. That's a great call. Time to kill. Time to Kill is really great. I really recently I really liked the Lincoln Lawyer. That oh, the Lincoln Lawyer was really good. Started with the it right? really it did. Started started the the I think the greatest lawyer movie of all time. With all due respect to uh, to, to Kill a Mockingbird, Scent phenomenal of a woman? job. Scent of a Woman is not. I've never seen Scent of a Woman. Oh, Add that's that to the, the one. List. That's the, the one. best lawyer movie in my opinion. My favorite one. Endlessly rewatchable. A few good we, men. I was about to say um, it. Dennis and Wendy and I were just having lunch the other day, and a few good men was on the TV. It was uh, I might have been there with you guys, and that's why I remember. I got one. I got one. Liar, liar. I love liar, liar. I'm in the dark here. You understand? All right, folks. That'll do it for us for this installment of Collider Movie Talk. Oh, he's not in that one. He's in Set of a Woman. That'll do it for us for this installment of Collider Movie Talk. We've totally lost control. Thank you so much for joining us. Listen, don't forget, lots of great films playing out our friends over at AMC Theaters. Head on over to www.amctheaters.com for all of your theater show time and, of course, your movie ticket information. While you're at it, click the subscribe button. Come back and join this pack of idiots every single day as we talk movies and movie news. We're glad you make this a party your day. I want to thank the people sitting at the table with me. First of all, sitting over here, Mr. Mark Ellis. Mark, where can people find you online? I'm hitting on all the aged hens. I am the cock of the walk <laughs> on Twitter and on Instagram at 5150 Ellis. This Saturday and Sunday I'll be on stage at the World Famous Comedy Store. Sitting over here, Mr. Christian Harloff. Christian, where can people find you? Find me right after this goes off the air because I'm going to periscope these fools and we'll do a post <laughs> show. Um, so make sure you do that. But also, check out Collider Jedi Council. The Smith Lord Tiffany Smith makes her debut today on Jedi Council and it will be the last sort of debut she's well, been on before as a regular as council a regular, member yes so you guys this is the last time we will do jedi council oh my god you right. have seeing the force awakens the last jedi make council sure you check the it force out force awakens hashtag collider jedi council and try to get your questions on the air and of course our lovely host today miss ashley mova ashley where can people find you online on twitter and on instagram at ashley mova happy thursday guys and if you're kind of in the sort of mood where you hate yourself and you think you need to be punished <laughs> Be Ashley Mova's waiter and don't bring her bread. <laughs> Just nice. throwing that Stay out. There. See, if you watch Stay my Periscope, Periscope you get the joke. Maybe you get that a little bit. Oh. And I want a special thanks to Wendy Desk behind the cameras, and thank you to you guys for joining us. So my name's John Campia, and until next time, bye-bye. Hey, guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.